Welcome back to the Scripting Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Paris, and we are thick into season one of our pilot podcast season. So I'm excited to get into a topic today that we haven't really touched on in its technical depth yet. And the reason is uh, because we've kind of been holding off. We've had something in development that's going to be launching very soon, if not already by the time this podcast is out. And that launch is the Trust Call book. It is the book that I have written and have finally put together in all of its pieces after three years of development. And it's the a fully comprehensive cold call methodology from philosophy to frameworks. And it might be the only one on the market. I've looked at all sorts of books and in the cold calling space within the subject of sales, and I haven't really seen anything quite like this. And it does have to do a bit with the topic of this podcast as well. So I thought it would take some time and pick out one chapter or one section of the book and just share a little bit with you to get a glimpse of the way that I see cold calling and the way that our team at Superhuman has utilized the H to H method to have scaled success with cold calling in the 21st century in the digital age. So that's what I'm going to go about into today. So let's take a look. This trust call book. All right. Is this is actually a proof copy, but it's about 200 plus pages of strategy, tactics, philosophy, and a little technique and history of cold calling and how we have seen this method work in multiple industries with all different types of titles and different types of personas. And I wanted to do this early on when starting Superhuman because I saw that in that phase of my life, I wanted to be involved with sales at some level. I wanted to make an impact in the sales profession. I was having success and thought there wasn't enough positive education and uh, advancement of the sales profession. And I wanted to figure out a way to contribute. The best way that I could think of was to start an outbound sales development agency so that I could get experience and our team could get experience in a wide range of selling dynamics. So this book was all about that conversation from zero to one in, in the digital age. And so this, the, the chapter I'm going to talk about today doesn't have to do as much with the methodology or the philosophy. We talked about that early on in other episodes, and I feel like I've covered a good amount of that and why the H to H method is needed and what are some of the basic foundational principles of the method. Today, I'm going to open up the guts of this book and talk about a very practical tactical approach that we take in cold calling. And it's actually a step within our cold call process that all of our team members who make cold calls must learn and is probably the most foundational and uh, uh, probably the most frequented part of a cold call conversation. And this is the Honin. So I'll back up for you. The cold call, as we have defined it, has three different frameworks in the H to H method. We have a consultative conversation framework. We have a no bull script framework. And we also have a survey script framework. And these three frameworks really help the salesperson to adjust their conversation based on the persona that we're talking to. So the consultative is the one we use the most because typically it's used with those folks who are behind a desk in a relatively open market where it's not saturated and people aren't too, too busy. And within this component and the others, they all have what we call the four core components of a cold call. So if you get the book Trust Call about the H to H method, you can learn all about every one of the components and how it applies to every framework. But with this part that I'm going to talk about today, the hone in, it is the second piece within those four core components It's the second component. 
So traditionally in our consultative conversation framework, we have what's called a quick prop and then the hone in and then a calling prop and then a next steps. And there's some sub components in between that we won't really get into as much today. But that second component is somewhat attached to that first one of that calling uh, that quick prop. See a lot of cold call technique and advice out there today uh, starts off a conversation asking permission to get into a conversation and then they deliver a pitch with some value and then ask for 15 minutes of their time. Now we have this type of framework in the no bull script framework, but our consultative is actually a little bit different. The first question we ask is what we would qualify as a discovery question, opening up the conversation. See, we have a theory that the longer you're in a conversation, the higher likelihood you have to set a meeting and a quality one. You're building rapport, trust, interest, and diffusing any salesperson stigma along the way. And that's why we default to that consultative framework. But this honing question is one I don't really ever hear much out there. And it's the one that we've been using for years. And we really prescribe to our team to use at SHP. And when you ask that question, you want to ask it in a certain way so that you have control of the conversation. And I'll get to that in a second. But just to get your, your, your senses around this question, let's start with a little precursor. Our quick prop is a statement we typically say to get the person's mind into the focus of our conversation. We've just called them, they're busy, right? So we need to open up a conversation after we've made our statement because we can hang up the phone quickly or they can hang up the phone quickly if we're not careful with how we go about those first seven seconds or so. The honing question then is typically what we call a balanced question. A balanced question is one where you aren't necessarily closing off the answers to get a win-lose, and you're also not opening up a potential can of worms by making the question way too open. The honing question is one somewhere in between. We actually ask our question so that it's opening up a couple different answers, but not enough to lose control of the path. So at Superhuman Prospecting, for example, we'll say, hi, my name is Ryan with Superhuman Prospecting. We do cold call appointment setting for companies like yours to help you grow uh, your business at will. Do you have an outsourced partner that helps you make cold call uh, cold calls right now, or have you considered it? And that's it. And I pause. Do you have a partner right now that's helping you make cold calls to set more leads and appointments so you can grow or have you considered it? And I'll just stop right there. So let's, let's dissect that question. In that question, what I see is that we have an opportunity to build a relationship here. We're asking it in a way too, that if I'm out, you know, meeting someone at a networking event or, you know, dating or, uh, you know, with a group of friends, I typically want to get to know somebody. So I'm going to ask questions, but give them some options. You know, if I'm just getting to know someone, I'm like, so, you know, uh, so what are you into? Are you into mountains or the, more the ocean, right? Or do you like movies or more shows? And it gives them some kind of framework. If I were to just say one, one of those items, right? If I were to say, uh, so do you like mountains? Well, man, it's just, uh, I guess that's my only option. Oh man, uh, this is a, this now it's on me, right? Now I really got to come with a good answer here and it might not be that deep, but by offering a couple different things, so do you have a partner currently, or have you considered something like this? What it does is it helps them create a, a smaller box that they don't have to necessarily swim around in. They can just have a couple different answers and say, okay, well, I know my bounds right now, and here's how I'm going to answer it. And it makes it much easier for them. This is all about fluidity. How are we going to get them to engage with us the easiest? and give us the best chance of going to the next step. 
a question that might be too closed would be something like, are you interested in learning more about our lead generation service? Or are you really happy with the way that you're cold calling right now? Are you getting the results you want right now with cold calling? That's not part of our H to H method. Why? It's too closed. It's way too closed. If, if they were to say, yes, we are happy. Well, it makes it way more difficult for me to come up with reasons to continue the conversation. Yes. I get to come up with something like, okay, well, you know, we could be, we can make you just as happy if not happier, <laughs> right? Like, or you could say some, if you said something like, okay, well, if you ever are unhappy then, but these are just ways to rationalize based on where you're at. They don't make sense in the conversation. You're just forcing it. So make this honing question is so vital to continue the conversation because either answer has to be the right one as you are in control, you are setting the tone and you are the one instilling belief and influence. On the other side, I could be way too open. I could say something like, hi, this is Ryan with superhuman prospecting. And we do cold call appointment setting for companies like yours to help you grow. What, what type of sales strategies do you have right now? That's, that's completely opposite with just as big of a problem. If you were to ask that question, man, you better be prepared for anything. You better have a list of 100 answers with rebuttals because it could be anywhere from, oh, it's, uh, we're using our strategies pretty good, or, you know, we're doing email or we're doing cold call or we're doing door to door, or we, we don't have a sales strategy or everything is we have is inbound, you know, and it just opens up a wild conversation that might allow you to move, but it also might be one where it's going to be hard to grasp that and pull it back to the next step and, and set you up for success. So the idea behind what we call a balanced question in the H to H method is that it gives the prospect an easy way to answer and allows you to still be in control regardless of what they say, as long as they follow it, right? If they go off on their own tangent, well, be ready for some objections or a red herring. But in this situation, if I were to say, this is Ryan with Superhuman Prospecting, and we do cold call appointment setting for companies like yours to help you continually grow past the pandemic and beyond. Do you have a cold call appointment setting strategy right now? Or have you considered something like this? Then the only things that they could say are, yes, we have something currently, or no, we don't. As long as they're following my logic path or yes, we have considered it or no, we haven't. So this way, regardless of their response, I have an in and I can spin that to be positive in my next response to them. If they say, yes, they have something or they've considered it. Well, then it's easy for me to say, well, that's amazing because you clearly see how important and valuable something like this is to your company and for the control of your growth. But if they say no, it's like, okay, well, that's why I'm calling. I'm reaching out because this is what we do and what we help companies with like yours. So either way it's a win and I can transition that bridge, that ledge into my next component. So thinking about what we're trying to accomplish in the first few seconds of a call, the hone in can really help you see that it gets you to those points. So to get even more technical in our H to H method, like I said, we go from in this trust call book, we go from philosophy to framework. So the framework that we talk about here is uh, these frameworks have a tactic to it. They have a point, they have a small strategy, but they also have an even deeper breakdown 
to what we call an, an API. These components have an API. And the API stands for assumption, purpose, and instruction. So the quick prop has one, the calling prop has one, the next steps have one, and the Honin has one. And so when we think about the Honin and this question, right, that we're asking, it starts off with these APIs. So how do we know to ask that? And what's the reason we ask that other than kind of the logic that I just told you? Well, an assumption would be that a prospect's business can improve or is, or is experiencing pain, right? So we can assume based upon prior to us asking that question that they have some type of pain in their business or they're looking to grow in some way um, or can improve in some way. And then also what we assume is that asking a question, a honing question, lengthens the conversation. And that's something that we would get into in another day, another time, but about lengthening the conversation, give us a better chance of building rapport and trust, which then, then can help us convert more because of that trust in our process, people or product. The purpose then is to lead them into a conversation. The assumption is asking, or we assume asking questions lengthens conversations, but the purpose is it leads them into a conversation, the hone in by asking them this question and they follow, then now we can have a back and forth. And it's also to identify the use status of our product and service. All right, so identify of their product or service. So where, where are they with this service, right? By saying, do you have a partner currently or have you considered it? Then I know generally in the scope of their familiarity and their usage, where they are. And that can not only help me answer the bridge and, and say, okay, great, you've used this, or no, you haven't. It'll help prepare me for the calling proposition later to be able to provide value that might be more relevant to them based upon their familiarity. If they've used something like this before, then I might choose to angle my calling proposition a little bit differently than if they were to say, uh, no, I haven't used this before. I'm not really familiar. I haven't really considered it. Then I would break things down a little bit differently. Finally, the instruction is to ask a question directed at or around a pain and then ask about familiarity with the product or service. So just like we said, hi, my name is Ryan with Superhuman Prospecting. We do cold call appointment setting for companies like yours to help your business grow. That's the quick prop and then the hone in. Do you have an outsourced partner for cold call appointment setting to help your business grow or have you considered it? What is their familiarity? So these, every single one of these components has an API to give you a sense of how to, the, the, cons, the construct of your statement or question for that part, for your business in particular. So if you're a salesperson, maybe looking at this, methodology in each one of these APIs for the components gives you some type of guide on how to develop that part of each component so that you're able to be very strategic and objective about each part. Now, this conversation from zero to one, this cold call is a conversation unlike any other in business because typically it's the only time you're ever going to have this conversation. It's the only time that you're going to be in a situation where you've never met someone at any point in time, and you're trying to establish that initial spark of a relationship. And it, after this, it's way different. And you have to think of this a little bit more structured and a little bit more purposeful because trust can be broken. And people are very skeptical about relationships in business. And if you're not careful, that can be uh, hurt in a second or at least push back a lot farther. It can slow it down a lot more. So having intent, having purpose, having objective gives you the ability to move quickly into building that relationship from zero, from no relationship into something, especially these first two components. Now, I've talked a little bit about the quick props simply just to set up the hone in. 
But one of the things that we talk about within this method are that the first two components, the quick prop and the hone in within this consultative conversation framework, these first two are really defensive. They're really just to get you out of a hole that you're in before you even get into the conversation. We have to think that people, when they realize it's a cold call, we go down a notch or two in their brain. We have to dig our way out. Now it's certainly possible, but we have to be that strategic and purposeful, like I said. So thinking about those first few seconds of, to get out the, the two components as they kind of work together, being structured and fluid helps you to open up and build a conversation. And that's what this hone in does. And, and, and really something that's overlooked a lot and something that I haven't really shared too much because we've needed to test, we've needed to see the results from asking this question. You know, we're all about that permission opener and getting permission when really, whether you use the permission or not, or you go right into the conversation, this is the true goal of the first seven seconds to get to that point so that they can start to talk. And when they start to talk, they start to feel comfortable and then you can respond and keep that statement, question, response, question, response going. And that builds trust and that can build you to the next phase to then ultimately set that next step, whether it's an appointment, a web registration, a 15 minute, you know, phone call, a zoom, whatever it is, a drop in. So there you go. That is a deep dive into a tactical part of this book, Trust Call, which I'm super excited to release because it's been years in development for us and uh, something that I don't think exists yet on the market. And I know we've talked a bit about some other, other types of strategies and other types of scripts and other types of frameworks, which are completely valid and, and what I've learned a lot from. But this is another method and why I'm passionate because in an age where we have so much noise around tips and tricks and uh, guru advice, that it's hard to become and find something stable for us to build muscle around so that we can use those tips and tricks in a way that not only will get your prospect excited or intrigued, but will also keep the relationship building so that they do continue on uh, past those first few moments with you. So hopefully we'll have more of these in the future, but I wanted to give some practical takeaway from this book, because I think that philosophy is great. It gives us perspective. It, it helps our mindset, but these tactics help us actually get results. So if you have comments, if you have questions, I love talking about this topic please reach out. Thanks for coming by the Scripting Sales Podcast, and we will see you on the next episode.